Hey everybody, happy Tuesday. It's been a while, but uh, I think I got everything figured out. Just gonna hang out here, wait for everybody to join in, have a good time. We're up. Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, I am back. I'll be on a Tuesday, but I'm back. I think I figured out all of our internet stuff at home, which was a complete nightmare. <laughs> the, the guy actually told me, he's like, I don't know who did your wiring for your internet to the house, but he had all sorts of different cables he had to run. He had to go back to the telephone pole. His wires were crossed, the whole thing. So I, I don't know the ins and the outs, but uh, he said that we're supposed to be like 15 megs or something like that for our internet and we were running at like seven something crazy so we got that fixed and i put in for an upgrade too so hopefully that'll be happening this week so there won't be any issues with this going forward whatsoever but uh anyways i'm happy to see you guys here Gonna take a little while probably for everybody to realize I'm back doing this again. I'm probably gonna shoot for doing this on Tuesdays from here on out for a while. Mondays with my schedule don't work too well uh, anymore, but that's okay. That kind of stuff happens and that's what's great about this. You can kind of decide whenever you wanna do it. So you know, I put up the question as far as what's been on, on everybody's mind lately. Uh, other than that I shaved my beard. I know it's one of those things. I know that's been the most important thing on your mind uh, So here we are the end of October and You guys know you know this guy Lynn that's been helping me out and really just showing me the depths of dog psychology that I never even knew existed Probably to today's day working with the dogs was probably the best I've had for quite some time and I mean quite some time because I saw it I don't even know how to break this down because I don't want to my brain is kind of scattered at this point and I want to put things in in a row for you so I guess I'm gonna rewind a little bit I played professional golf for about eight years and I remember when I would get a lesson from my coach about my swing you know, it was pretty much, you know, you had to feel where your swing was, you, you know, and get a sense of it and be made aware of it. awareness, okay? And then at that point, once I learned what I was supposed to do, now it's my job to practice. I had to put in the practice. And guys, I would sit on the driving range, the back of the driving range, and I would hit balls until my hands bled. And I'd have tape and band-aids and everything covering up calluses and blisters. And no matter what, I still kept hitting because I was just trying to be as good as I could get. And from there, once what I learned started to happen in a golf tournament, then I knew I, I had, I could grasp a hold of something. Today was the first time that happened for me with the learning the depths of dog psychology. So obviously I've been doing a ton of leash work with Lynn and he's been teaching me all sorts of stuff about that and today I can't get into the the details of the exact like what I did but we had an evaluation today with a dog that came in for a number of behavioral reasons that are unrelated to my experience with it and for those of you that come to us you realize that we have a very large kennel uh, that we use for evaluations or whatever just for an area for some dogs and came time for me to bring that dog and put it into that big large kennel. This gives us a chance to observe the dog, to watch its behavior, to learn and see how it reacts, see how it handles watching a group, the whole thing. So we had all the dogs out and Serena took everybody out. So I want, I take this dog over on leash. I open up the gate to this kennel. Dog does not want anything to do with going into this kennel. Like zero, nothing. Starts pulling back, puts on the brakes. You guys all know kind of what that looks like without me having to dive into it. So I did this leash work that Lynn showed me and 
it, I think it lasted three minutes. I've actually watched it twice on our surveillance just to be able to see like how it all went down. And, and I, I honestly felt like it took longer than that. Um, and I remember thinking to myself, I have to get this done before Serena comes in with the dogs. But if she comes in, I'm probably gonna tell her to go back out because I'm not done. Because my focus has to be on the dog. It can't be on a watch. It can't be on somebody's el somebody else's schedule. It has to be on the dog's schedule, which there is no schedule, right, for them. They don't wear watches, no sense of time, yada, yada. However, this dog, after some leash work, looked up at me the way I've never seen a dog look at me before, ever. Even, I, I mean, you know, Maddie, my dog, has given me some looks, and obviously that's, that's your own dog, right? And you have that relationship with your own dog. However, this dog that I, I had known for, I mean, known, known, had been in our building for, I don't know, an hour, uh, just enough to bring it in on kennel, to one kennel, and then I had to transfer it from one kennel to another, and that's it. Otherwise, zero of that. So, in those, in that, like, the last 30 seconds, this dog looked at me, and I can't even really put into words the feeling that I got when the dog looked at me, other than felt like the dog knew me. Like, the dog totally looked at me like, I understand something about you, I, I, I don't wanna say I get you, cause that sounds really, really cheesy. But this dog looked into my eyes like it was looking into the, into the depths of me, and I've never had that from a brand new dog that I've just met before, ever. And it gave me a feeling of connection that I haven't felt before. And obviously I've, you know, training for 12 years, you come across some, you know, a good amount of dogs over, the, over that time frame. But this was way different. I honestly wish I could have just snapped a, a, a picture of it, but I was so, uh, you know, in that realm of dealing with that dog one-on-one -on -one that it was just, I had to take in that moment, you know? There was, there was no other way about it. I had to take in that moment. So, about 30 seconds later, that dog actually just started walking and walked over and was heading towards the door of this big kennel that it was originally putting on the brakes for. And we both just walked in like nothing, like the dog had done it a million times. I, I, I got the dog inside the kennel and I was, I was a little awestruck because what I did worked uh the look that i got from the dog was i'm telling you it was that look at look this is a i'm sure you've heard this before if i drop you in the middle of china with a tour group and you lose your tour group and nobody speaks english and four days later you all of a sudden hear somebody speak english it piques your in interest like whoa who is that i need to go talk to them that was that kind of feeling that I got with that dog. It was way, way different than I'd ever uh, had before, especially with this type of dog who was very, very reactive, lifting its lips a lot at the other dogs. Uh, it, it just was to a level that I have not had before. I, and I've, I've had that before with some dogs to a, a, a much different, different level, different degree, through different styles of training. But the leash work, that I did, which there was no big pops, no big pulls, none of that stuff, none of that at all. But it was like we communicated on a different level and it totally worked, the dog totally got it. And from then on, the dog listened very well to me throughout the day and I realized, you guys saw my post and it's already starting some good conversations here from this afternoon, um, about giving, showing the dog respect first before we ask for respect and I, f I feel like there's a lot of training ways out there where we try to get the dog to respect us first and not vice versa and this seems like such a gentle and respectful way to do things the way it happened today it was just crazy uh, so that was this morning and then I had this uh, kind of late morning I had a private lesson uh, it was actually a former board and trained client that came in, just kind of having some leash issues, dog pulling, nothing, nothing major. But the, the cool part was, even though it was nothing major, 
Uh, we did some leash work, started super soft, super gentle, and the dog just started getting it. So I'm telling you by like noon today, it just felt like there was a nice flow with what I was doing with the dog. So uh, again, it goes back to that analogy of finally knowing what my swing was supposed to feel like in a tournament and, and really internalizing everything that I had learned. And now we're here we are back doing it with the dogs, internalizing everything that I've learned. And it was a very cool concept. Now, I also understand that this isn't, look, our, our life is a roller coaster. We, we always have highs and lows. It's not like we're born and it just keeps getting better, 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 better every single day. Obviously, we know that life doesn't work that way. And I'm very aware that it's not going to work that way tomorrow. I could go in tomorrow and just be like, what the heck? I just had like one of the best days ever and now this is like one of the worst days. I, I, you know, as far as dealing with the dogs, who knows? But the cool part is now I know what it feels like. Uh, and I always tell people that too, is once you know how to like walk your dog, pro you know, properly, it's hard not to know after that. You know what I mean? It, you know, now you know, you can't not know in a way. It's terrible English, but you guys know what I mean. So to me, having that respect um, that communication, everything about that was at a degree that, I mean, that just motivates the hell out of me. I almost used a different word there, but I don't know if there's kids watching, but it totally m motivated me. I mean, it was, it was like, wow, this is, that's that moment that is just very cool. Um, I caught it on our surveillance. Unfortunately, you can't see the leash stuff. Uh, but I think that's going to be a clip that I save for quite some time because it, again, the other part of that too is that three minutes felt way longer. I mean, when I rewound it to show Serena, uh, I, th I thought this was like a seven or eight minute ordeal and it was three minutes. Uh, but that's being in that present state of mind too, you guys. Too, you know, People that meditate, which I did for years and still do off and on, people that meditate understand the being in that present state of mind. And you know, when you get so hyper focused on something and you're able to take everything in because you're in that moment, you're in that environment, you're in that, that split second last 10 seconds, you know, that one minute last three minutes, that type of thing, it is such a cool feeling. Athletes will refer to it as the zone. I firmly believe that. Uh, in the dog training world, it, it is just being in that moment, being in that present. You hear Caesar talk about it a lot, stay in the present. The, you know, dogs don't think about yesterday or tomorrow. It's in the moment. And it was just very, very cool the way that it worked out. And um, I'm proud. I'm proud I was able to be aware of it. And the other part of it too, the, the cool part is, is that we get to take moments like that with our surveillance and it's t a teachable moment. So as much as we may look at a behavior and see like one dog snap at another uh, and then look at the surveillance and go, oh, okay, we see who, how this all started and what happened and how we recovered and that kind of thing. This is one of those cool moments that we get to look at and go, oh, wow, let's, you know, now we know what to do with a dog like this and now we know how to handle it. So it's, it's very neat. It's very neat the way that happens. So I know I'm kind of bailing on all the questions that everybody had uh, when I posted I was going to go live. So I, I apologize about that. And I had, you know, fully planned on answering those questions tonight. But after today, today was a high for me. It was a, it was a natural high. And I mean, it's like, I can't wait to get started tomorrow too. I, it's, I'm gonna get in there and, and look, it's gonna be a different group and I'm very aware of that. Again, the golf course, it's very different every day, weather changes. Same thing with the group. The group dynamic is different. And there's some days, there's some days, especially learning something new, there's some days where I'm like, man, I just want, everything I want the dogs to be the same every single day I just want it to be the same so I can create this major pattern and build off of it and uh, I I can't because it's not the way it works but tomorrow is a new day it's a new group and we got to start fresh and we got to start over and get back into it and that was you know 
just really cool to me the way it works. So, look, I think right now, now that I kind of you know explained my day and the whole respect thing, I think right now we just fly by the seat of our pants and I just answer any questions on how things are, you know, if I can answer any of your questions. In the meantime, until somebody asks me a question, uh, I'm gonna do the cheesy thing and just say hello to everybody, Corey and Robin, um, and of course, Mom. Cindy, how are you? And Dave, Andrea, uh, Valerie, Rebecca, Don, Christopher, Claudine, everybody's here, rolling, 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 rolling. I can't wait till we get up to 100 one of these nights. You know, we, I think I got up to like 45 or something like that, but in the meantime, until somebody asks me a, uh, a question here, I, you guys, I don't know if you had a chance to listen to the latest podcast, my little sit down conversation with Lynn and uh, Art Ortiz. Art is from DogFit Dallas, that's his business, business in Dallas, Texas. He was up here for that uh, workshop a couple of weeks ago who, that attracted trainers from all over um, the country, which Mr. Alaska was on here a little while ago, I just saw. Um, but yeah, Texas, Orlando, Virginia, I think Jersey, Boston, uh, Lynn's from Arizona, obviously Vermont. It's just an amazing experience. Corey, how do you learn to walk a dog properly? What should you look for? You should look for slack on the leash. Absolutely. Slack on the leash. There shouldn't be any tension on that leash when you're walking a dog properly. Um, you, you know, I, there's a there's a big mindset too, uh, Corey. Or not mindset. What's the right word for this? There's a um, there's two different ways you can look at it. You can either look at it as I want body position or I want state of mind. So it's it's really what you want at the end of the day. If I have the right state of mind, I don't mind if Gemma's ten feet away from me. But if she doesn't have the right state of mind, I don't want her ten feet. I want her closer to kind of rein her back in. So we gotta look at what you want. To me, you know, learning originally how to do it, I would want state of mind first and next to me. But being next to you doesn't bring state of mind. You see what I mean, you guys? Body position doesn't dictate state of mind. Uh, state of mind will dictate body position. And that's what we're looking for is, is, is really state of mind over anything else. So. What do you look for, Corey? You look for a slack in the leash. That's all there is to it. Slack in the leash and patience. Sometimes it takes some time. You know, we see, you guys, dog training isn't black and white. There's no quick fixes. There's no like wave the magic wand and fix it. It takes some time. You can play the short game and you can try to get the quick fix. Uh, in the long run, it's gonna take you longer to actually get to where you need to get to. Uh, that's that's kind of my opinion on it. Robin, my husband works from home now as an upholsterer. The compressor runs most of the day and our four-year-old chocolate lab is scared to death of that noise. Any suggestions? Uh, I would probably create a lot of proximity away from that, Robin. Uh, I would also like to get some video of that dog too so I can see what's going on with your dog, how bad it is, uh, that kind of dynamic. It's gonna take some time, you guys, Look, when dogs get scared, that trumps everything. It trumps thirst, it trumps hunger. They just, they can shut down. So we have to, again, this is where we have to be super respectful to the dog. You, you can't try to correct the dog, like, or punish, like it's terrible to, to even consider that type of behavior to that dog. You have to create some sort of space away from that dog to uh, the compressor in this situation a long ways away even with it on like if you have to get 200 yards away with the compressor on and slowly work your way back in for that dog to like oh I hear something I'm not so sure we have to be able to work past those types of situations uh, and that takes a lot of time again that's one of those things I I, I can't remember I, it was on the post today about being respectful oh I honestly think this might be my slogan. It's my job to take take the time. It's my job to take the time. That, that's all there is to it. We have to take the time. As dog trainers, and I know there's dog trainers that are watching this, it's our job to take the time. There's no quick fix. There's no, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not looking 
to, to create a quick fix with a dog. I think I was early in my career because that just seemed like the right thing to do. That's what people wanted. And I'm not looking for that type of situation at all. You know, if the client requests it, that's not my type of client. No offense to anybody, but if you're looking for a super duper quick fix on something that's gonna take some time, you can look on YouTube all day. You'll never get what you're supposed to get out of it. So that's all there is to it. Robin, so he finds the furthest point in the house from it and shakes. Yeah, so you need to get out of the house. That's all there is to it. But again, I'd like to see some video too because this dog hearing that compressor, um, we got we gotta create a new association with it. And Robin, this is not easy. This is not like, I, again, a quick fix. It's going to be like, hey, let's wave the magic wand and all of a sudden your dog is like great right into it, you know? So that's all there is to it. Um, yeah, Valerie, if you're willing to be invested in your clients for months, my 21 day plan, yeah. Look, and you guys, we have uh, taken dogs in for the two or three or four week board and train and we, we've sometimes had to keep that dog longer and I and Lynn, oh, so not, you guys, I can't tell you how refreshing it was to hear that that once he gets the dog to a certain point where they, that he was, that's where he wanted to get. Now the dog stays an extra two weeks. Now I'm not saying I'm going to be keeping dogs for you know every dog that comes in. I'm going to keep it for six months. I can't. I I don't have a setup for that type of situation. Um, but we've kept dogs longer because I'm not happy where they are by the time that they're ready to go home and that's not fair to the client. Um, I think it's more unfair to send a dog home unfinished than it is to keep it longer away from the client and get more of a finished product, you know, a finished behavior than vice versa. So that's, that's, uh, that's kind of where I'm at with that. I, it just, I feel like I've hit a new level, you guys. And so it's funny, Serena and I talk about this all the time, and we it was about the new year or something. Um, I just kind of felt smarter in a way. I don't know. Do you guys ever feel that way? Do you just kind of all of a sudden feel smarter? Maybe after you started a new job or something like that, and you're a couple months into it, and you're like, wow, I'm, I'm starting to get this. It's starting to make a lot of sense now. And uh, that's that's just kind of where I feel everything is. Like, I... Uh, I don't normally take in dog training content. That's because I'm sticking to my own guns. Um, but there was a couple things brought to my attention today. Man, did I look at that stuff through a different set of glasses than what I did before. Way different. I mean, it was crazy. I And I just looked at it and I'm like, wow, I could pick all these things um, that were just like, they were billboards to me where I know before they they, they wouldn't have been. They wouldn't have been at all. And that that's that's kind of cool to me. And not that I'm going out there nitpicking other trainer stuff. Honestly, I could care less uh, about what other trainers are doing, unless it's somebody on my radar and I'm interested or learning or something. Um, but I think looking at it from a different set of glasses, eyes, if you will, it's been pretty. Um, it's made me a lot more aware of everything. That's for sure. That's for that's for sure, but it's been wonderful. It's been great. I I, I can't express uh, the feeling that I've had here in the last, and it's been kind of a roller coaster. I got to tell you guys. I mean, I know if you've been listening to the podcast, you've kind of seen and kind of felt my kind of up and down here been going on. And today was finally like a big high, and and I I needed that because it's motivating, it's inspiring, and it's it's a lot of fun. So. That's for sure. Uh, Corey, might be too big a topic, but I'm in a dilemma. To keep my dog in daycare, he'll need to be neutered by eight months at the latest. And Vet says if we can wait until 12 months, I should. Thoughts on when to neuter? Uh, Corey, that's ultimately up to you. I mean, you, you, I think you've got a Weimar on her, right? So you got a little bit of a larger breed dog. It's not like you got a Chihuahua running around your house. Uh, I mean, I, I, I see two different aspects from this because actually from daycare, um, our policy is six months. And I get it, I've lost some clients to that, and there's, there's no doubt. Um, but there's also a lot of clients that have 
figured a way out to hire dog walkers, pet sitters, whatever, get the dog active, take it for a play date to another friend's house, that type of thing to basically fulfill them during that time uh, and then be able to get their dog neutered or fixed, you know, spayed at, a, at the right time and then get back into the daycare piece. So I, I get it. I totally, totally get it. it. It is a little bit of a dilemma, but it's also the dog daycare world versus the vet world. It's, it's just what it is. You know, I, I uh, <laughs> the, the reason I did it before, because I honestly don't know the, uh, I don't know if I've ever heard of a dog daycare that will take all intact males and females. I don't know, that's, that's a dangerous game to play to me, for sure. Boy, I don't need to be a grandfather to anybody, but Corey, you gotta figure it out. I, I mean, I don't, I don't have a happy answer for you there. You, it's, it's what feels right in your gut. You gotta, you gotta sit back, take a couple of minutes and go, what feels right? Don't let your head take over. Go with those instincts, what feels right? What should you do? Uh, Whitney, we dread the two or so trick-or-treaters we will have because Reba is so reactive when anyone knocks on the door. Should we be highly treating with every knock, tethering her, muzzling? I realize this is slightly last minute. Uh, Whitney, in your case with Reba, um, I think just keeping her separate from the door is best because of her intensity. And you guys, listen, I, I know Whitney and I know her dog, so the, the advice I'm giving to her is because I know her situation. So look, and this is trick-or-treating in general. Play it safe. If you're not sure about things, you can totally make sure by doing what you need to do to keep things safe. So I, I wouldn't, in that, in that element, Whitney, you're, you're kind of... You, you you jumped on the bike, you've taken a couple spins around the house, and now you you feel like you're ready to go to the Tour de France. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think you're shooting too high for the moon here in that element before doing all the other work leading up to it. So, I mean, treating in that moment, the timing has to be like picture perfect, precise. I, I can tell you right now, I don't have that timing with food in that type of situation. Because if you feed at the wrong time, you're feeding that wrong state of mind, that reactive state of mind, and you don't wanna do that. So I think it's just best you keep her separate from everything going on. And worst case scenario, you flip the lights off and you don't take any trick-or-treaters. That's all there is to it. Uh, Corey, I'm also concerned about him developing certain habits like marking. Never had experience with that kind of stuff. I, I, Corey, that goes back to structure, making sure you only give him certain times to go to the bathroom. It, marking is because he's allowed to go out and mark, too. I, you know, there has to be structure with what's going on. But I feel that's a permanent solution to temporary behavioral issues. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you guys, neutering, it doesn't fix everything. I think It seems like it was like eight or 10 years ago where it, the, whole, the word going around was, get your dog fixed, it'll fix your behavioral problems. You know, your male dog won't be aggressive anymore because he doesn't have all the testosterone in him. You know, get his uh, junk chopped off and he'll be a much better dog. It doesn't work that way. It's the big picture, everybody, big picture. That's all there is to it. Um, you know, no doubt, Tim. He hopped on. Hello, hello from Alaska. You guys, this guy Tim is an excellent guy. Uh, he, uh, what he does in Alaska with the amount of room that he has and the amount of dogs that he takes is insane. It's, it's pretty insane, but super, super nice guy. Uh, but Tim, it is a fun journey. We're, we're kind of on it together here. Certainly a, a brotherhood. I've only got two months on you, so. In the grand scheme of things, two months is going to be like a blink of an eye in about two years. That's for sure. That's for sure. But uh, so I think that's it for our questions, you guys, tonight. So I hope you enjoyed this. I if you can share this or uh, you guys know I don't ask for much here, and I'm certainly not here to sell anything by any means whatsoever. Um, so if, sharing this or 
listening to the podcast or giving me a review on the podcast or review on here, you guys, that means more to me than anything that anything else. That certainly drives um, it certainly drives business for me. So I'm not asking you to spend any money with me whatsoever. Zero, 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 and I'm not going to. I'm not going to be holding up and getting, hey, buy my thermos with our brand new logo on it or something like that. You're not going to find me doing that kind of stuff. Nor are you going to find me asking you to pay a membership or anything like that. I don't, I don't, I don't believe in any of that kind of stuff. I enjoy sitting here chatting with you guys, giving out free content or free knowledge or just a conversation to have here too. I, I think that's. Um, that's very cool to do this way as well. Uh, I wonder. Sorry, I'm trying something here. Guess that's not going to work. Huh. Oh, well. All right. So, yes, I'll be back doing this. Plan. Let's plan on Tuesdays from here on out. Tuesdays at 8.15 p.m. on our Facebook page, Vermont Dog Trainer. And uh, I'm not sure what we're going to talk about next week. So I, uh, again, I apologize to the people that posted on their, uh, or uh, responded to my post and said, hey, this is what's been on my mind. I, I realized I didn't get to it, but today was such a high for me, you guys. It just felt really good. And I wanted to be able to share it to share it with all of you. So I certainly appreciate you staying on here and being loyal. Uh, it means a lot to me. It truly does. So you guys be safe tomorrow night, Halloween, obviously no chocolate. Do the right thing. Keep your dog safe if you need to. Get him out of the just opposite end of the house. Nothing around the door. Do not bring your reactive dog how trick or treating on Halloween. Do not, please. That would be fantastic. If you did not, um, I, I think I think enough has been said about Halloween. I'm sure you guys have heard it all by now. So. Uh, yeah. Also, I've got a podcast in the hopper. I guess you could say. It's with Cheryl Ross from Washington State. I'm hoping to have it out by the end of this week, maybe this weekend. And I'm also interviewing on Monday too, a wonderful trainer from Portland, Oregon. So it should be a good time. Uh, keep listening to the podcast, you guys. There's tons of good stuff. And uh, I've got something else in the works too, but you'll just have to wait and see. I'll give you a hint. Audio. See ya.